Welcome, everybody. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Caroline Bowman. I'm acting director of Cooper Hewitt. And I'm really thrilled to welcome each and every one of you. Thank you for being here bright and early on the Upper East Side. And this is only the second event in this beautiful space. And this is the trustees room. So we'll do dinners here, meetings, et cetera. And it's also available for corporate events. So I thought I would put that plug in. Um, I, <laughs> Well, it's a good getaway, you know, brainstorm space, I would think. Um, huge shout out to Beth Comstock, who is the president of our board of trustees, and GE is sponsoring this special breakfast. So thank you, Beth, thank you, GE, and welcome, Linda. Great to go. And just to tell you a little bit about this breakfast, we started National Design Week, it's hard to believe, seven years ago now, thanks to Target. And obviously the aim was to really spread the message of design more nationally. And so far, we've done a great job. It's getting bigger and better every year. Thank you to many of you who participated in our teen design fair yesterday. We welcomed over 350 teenagers. And it's like speed dating, except you sit down with a landscape designer, an interior designer, whomever you'd like in the design industry. And you can, the kids can ask anything they want. I, lo I love one year, one kid asked Isaac Mizrahi, how much money do you make? And Isaac said, less than last year. And I thought, what a, what a great response. <laughs> Um, and then last night we had a celebration with five of the winners of the National Design Awards and we had a winner's panel. Again, we had over 400 people. And then tomorrow night is our gala. We have about 550 people coming to the gala. So join us, get involved. It's wonderful to see you all. And now I'm very, very honored to introduce Bob Safian. Faust Company has been our media partner now for several years, and this is the third year that you've moderated. And since there have been many debates in frequent weeks, um, I think you have some competition, but I know you'll uh, come out number one. So over to you, Bob. <laughs> Thank you. It's nice to see everybody here. Um, the, you know, one of the great things I, that I love about this breakfast is um, it's casual. It's easy. As, as was clear in the beginning, you guys are uh, not shy about talking and sharing things. And my job is simple, I, it's just to let you guys talk with each other and try to um, have a conversation about where you see design and business and where you see it going and uh, what lessons we can, we can offer each other. I believe um, that this era is, is made for designers. Yeah. I think this is made for designers. You know, we are, we are, we are not, have not been trained and schooled for a world that is chaotic, right? MBAs yeah. are trained for a world that follows a certain kind of order. Designers are trained for a world that anything can happen and everything is open. And I think that that creates a lot of opportunity for designers. But I also wonder about what kind of responsibility that uh, puts on designers to help bring others along and, and what that challenge is like for you guys within your organizations to be the person who's trying to bring people along to some place that maybe they need to be, but they don't necessarily want to go to. What is the role of, a, of design and a designer? Design and a design philosophy, the approach to design, is an excellent problem-solving methodology for business and that not enough people use it and even think of it in the base case as an approach to business solutions. Now we get to the point where we oftentimes don't even know what the problem is that we're trying to solve. And I find that designers are amazing at identifying the problem. Anyone can write an interesting idea in an email or put it up in PowerPoint, but the designer can actually sculpt it, right, and, and bring it to life. So if you can feel, you can touch the experience, that's when you really can help shape the future. You know, I think with um, in the world we live in, everything's getting more complex, right? And I think there's an urgent need for people to simplify, right? And uh, simplification for it to be relevant needs to be made by somebody with deep knowledge in something. If it's like service at a restaurant, you want to focus on the meal, not on the service, right? Um, I think for us to progress in whatever it is, generally the best design is something that, to your point, is simple, but that simplicity requires deep knowledge to get there by somebody. And as we've introduced design-led thinking, brought in interaction designers, industrial as well as software designers, it feels as though we're bringing the customer in. 
because our engineers um, have a wonderful view of technology. I think what our user experience and our user designers have done is said, this needs to apply in the world. And um, clarity and simplicity and ease of use are all things that need to marry with the best of technology. The role of innovation is to close the gap between the current user experience to the ideal one. Okay? It's not about making inventions. So if you focus it on the user experience, and for us the definition of design is a total experience thinking, so it's not only the way it looks, so everything is combined together, then it becomes really central within the company. And every element of the, not only the product, the, the packaging, the way it's published, the way it's uh, advertised, everything uh, revolve around this experience thinking. Mm -hmm. And then, then I think it's really a possibility to make it a central piece of business. My time at Nike was just an awakening experience because I was just, I got to see so much new, cool, innovative stuff. Mm -hmm. And then when I would go <clears throat> consult for another brand, the first thing I would say is, I want to do it like Nike does it. <laughs> and that's your problem. You know, you're not allowing your creative team to show you in a new, innovative way. So you're one degree always behind the curve. I wouldn't say that in Alessi there is any difference between business and design. And it might be an exception in that world, but really everything and all the steps are informed by design. And so, really, there is, I don't see a lot of conflict in my company between, you know, MBAs and, uh, and, and designers. So it's almost like, you know, uh, knowing another language, right? And design is a language. When we're looking for a marketing person, it's not, you know, defined as a design role, but that marketing person with that awareness uh, of, of innovation process, it's, it's like a cultural component to that to any discipline. An engineer that has that sensitivity um, is a more valuable engineer. But then there's you know, so many other ways that design is influencing how we run our business. We have product design that's generating user experience on the web. Um, we're celebrating physical product design um, by selling Alessi or chairs or you know, physical product. Um, what I do most of the day is more of like a workflow process, human resources design, where I'm tangling complexities, creating efficiencies, um, you know, figuring out the best way to create a workflow process. And each person, it's about, I think, figuring out the best way to do what they're doing. I think that's the point, is that, is that designers focus on behavior. And first layer is individual behavior, if it's an, a, a lonely product. But the next layer is group behavior. And for a lot of things, we're realizing that the value goes up when it becomes a group behavior, when there's a way to connect the thing to more. So it, I think it's becoming a required skill set. And not that everything has to be social, which right now has been the knee-jerk reaction, which is, I think, wrong. But everyone, every item should be questioned, is it more valuable if it becomes social? And if so, then you know, play it out. I want to reframe the uh, designers make money, because I'm a dealist, to designers create value. That then the money comes from. I think great leaders, great CEOs are trying to create value, which then money turns into money. Yeah. yeah. The single question I get most from designers is like, how do I convince the company, the value of design. And I'm so sick of that question because, you know, if you have to argue it, you're not, you're not doing it right. So uh, you have to show up and, and, and just in your day-to-day -day work, prove that out. I'm struck when I'm hearing all of you talk about the uh, essential uh, sense of optimism and possibility in this room. And, and you know, when, when I talk to people about this uh, chaos that's going on in many business organizations, there is a tremendous amount of fear and anxiety around this. And I'm not saying you guys don't have fear and anxiety, but I, but I think it's sort of overridden by your, your optimism and the possibility that you see in it. And I think that's, uh, that's terrific. Uh, it seems like you guys are having a good time. I think that's a good, you know, all of that stuff comes from design. Use design to be provocative in your organization. It's, it's funny how simplicity can be provocative in a complex organization. <laughs> An alternative approach to the problem, a reframing, can be... They want the, the broadest uh, set of problems to solve. You'll be able to do this and this and this and this, and that's the thing that seems to spark.